one time. We have to say the yeah. It's not somewhere in heaven. It's already bestowed. Your makeup, when God created you, it was then instilled. It's there. Hallelujah. So we need to tap into it and understand it. Now, 
Perhaps let's first dis- define what is glory. This is a very broad subject. Hallelujah. We use the word glory when we honor him. We, glory, we glorify you. But the glory I want to talk about today, when you, when, you, when you start the Hebrew, it talks about doxa. Simply means manifested perfection of his character. That's the glory we're talking about. Hallelujah. Manifest, manifested perfection of his character. Especially his righteousness of which all men fell short. Hallelujah. In other words, we're saying all, all of us, we fell short of Jesus. Because when you talk about glory, you are referring to Jesus himself. Hallelujah. Now, let's read our first verse. And some of the verse, uh, our, my colleagues, they've touched based on them on Monday and, and yesterday. But again, we'll just go through them. Hallelujah. As God help us. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. I'm one of those when God gives you a message, even you can preach it, I'll come preach it. I will never change it unless it tells me to change it. Hallelujah. So he gave me this message when they told me about this. That was three weeks ago. There was no way I would change it unless the Holy Spirit ch- changed it. So I will preach it as is. Hallelujah. Now, for all of oh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The fact that you can fall short of it, it means it's something that and you lost it. Hallelujah. I know sometimes when we pray, we expect something from heaven. You will be sure that you were so ignorant that we ignore we look up to him and he looked down and said, what's wrong with these people? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want us just to look before I get into my message to this regenerated spirit. There's much to learn from the regenerated spirit. What is this regenerated spirit? We were not saved because we were just escaping hell. There's something more but we need to tap into it and live in that newness of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Where we've read, when you continue to verse 24, let it be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God set forth as appropriation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previously committed. Now, when man fell short of this glory, the only thing that could help man was justification. That's where everything begins, but it doesn't end there. Redemption or a cross was just a bridge to bring us back where we are in the kingdom of God. If men are zang on, there won't be any need for redemption. Adam would have continued in the presence of the Lord, in the heavenly realm, in the glory. Adam used to live in the glory. When sin came, separated him with the glory. So the intention here is to be brought back to that glory. It starts from justification. After justification, it is sanctification, which is twofold. It is positional and it's also progressive. The glory that is embedded in your spirit, you will only see it when you go through the process of consecration separation, sanctification. It's hidden. It's in your spirit. It's not something we're asking from God. It's in you. 
But you can die. It's highly possible. Hallelujah. After that sanctification, there is another glorification I wanna t- I'm not going to talk about, which that one will happen when Jesus comes. Our body will be saved. Then again we'll be glorified. Most of the time when we talk about glorification, they think it's future. It's only the glorification of the body. We are glorified already in our spirit. The thing is to, is to know how to tap into that and live into it. Hallelujah. Are we still together? So this door is there, cannot be manufactured here on earth. Hallelujah. It's something from God. That's why we fell short of it. Only God can res- could restore it. Hallelujah. Now, the, in- the intention of this teaching is to understand this glory that is hidden in you so that we, we-, we can allow it, unleash it, and live in it. Because if we don't, we deny the Father the glory. Uncle, uncle will never ask something. When God asks something from you, it is because if God wants money, it's because he gave you money. If he asks fruits, it's because he gave you talents. Because anything that is born of flesh is flesh. God will never require anything that is manufactured by man. This story is a product of God. It was born by the Spirit of God. He demands it. When you unleash it, He gets glorified. But when you hide it, there's no glory that goes to Him. I normally say when you go to a territory and you find people, the problem is not God. Is the sons of God in that area have failed to manifest the glory of God. When people are confused, we are going down, they reject miracles. They reject the move of God. They don't understand God. The issue is not God. The issue is not God who are failing to manifest that is already in them. Because when it's unleashed, the glory doesn't go to the sun. The glory goes to God. But if we don't understand, we keep it. There's no glory that goes to God. Hallelujah. Now, John chapter 3, verse 27. I don't know if I gave you this verse. I'm just trying to you to understand that which I'm talking about is already in you. A man can receive nothing unless it has, it has been given to him from heaven. Whatever we have, it has already been given, been released. It cannot be manufactured here on earth. Hallelujah. Are we still together? Now, let's get to, I want you to understand, Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and 30. This is basic stuff. It's something you know. But I trust the Holy Spirit will reveal something. Now, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, please, Bambele, this he also called him. Whom he called, this he also justified. Whom he justified, this he also glorified. This story we're talking about is not something, some dispensation. We are already justified. We are already glorified. But the issue... He has glorified your spirit, not your soul. This glorification 
It's in your spirit. We cannot see it. It requires you to tap into it and allow it to flow. And only then we'll be able to see it and the glory will go to God. Are we together? But this glorification hasn't happened in our flesh. And this manifest, manifestation is not for future. That glorification for future is for your body to be saved, to be glorified. But our born again spirit, it's glorified. That's why when you allow it, when you walk in your new call, when you live in the newness of life, there's so much into it. There's so much into you. Hallelujah. God loves us so much. He loves us so much. Again, John 17, verse 24. Just laying the foundation. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. The man called Glory, he wants us to be with him. That they may also behold my glory, which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. Oh, can I read 22? Sorry. I want 22. In the very same chapter 17. And the glory which, or the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are. This glory has already been given. That's why Jesus is saying, what is the glory that you have given me, I have already given them. So that they may be one. And I want them next to me. Hallelujah. The Bible says, because as he is, so we are in this world. But you see, I want us to, to be careful about that. He's talking about your spirit. When you read Proverbs 23, 27, you know, it's very important to balance the word. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. You can be glorified in your spirit, but because you are failing to understand and tap into who you are, in the spirit, we are already glorified. But when we see you, we might see something else. Because you fail to transform. This transformation is to understand what God has done in the spirit and work it out and so that it can overflow. Because God has not... He never touched your soul. He left it untouched. That is why you can be born again and the following day you can go and do things. Because your soul is untouched. It requires you and the Holy Spirit working together. You are like him here on earth. But at the very same time, we learn to Kabangayo. Amayama Kama, your mind can resist what has happened in your soul. God can say you're blessed. But because your mind is not transforming, can say I'm not blessed. And you remain unblessed. In the spirit, though, we are blessed. As much as you are glorified, I may look at you over like a common man. Remember, Galatians 1, verse 1. A son, the Bible compares a son to a slave. If the son is still a child, the Bible says, even though the son owns everything, but because the son is not maturing, he doesn't differ from the slave. I may look at you. It's easy to claim in things in the spirit. I am blessed coming out. I am blessed coming in. Do you know how to tap into those blessings? 
Those things have been done in the spirit. I normally say in heaven, where God is, they are no longer, I want to be careful how I put this. God is not there in heaven trying to, let me place this one today. Let me place this one today. The Bible says that you are already blessed. The issue is, if, that is why if faith is not the tool to twist God's mind. If faith is just a, a hand to receive. Let me pipe you ask, you don't receive. I got you ask, I don't give. The issue is the receiving, not the giving. Of course, when you ask, your, your request, your heart should be vetted. But it's not about God. It's you. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we still together? Yes, it's hot here, sir. Philemon chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. I want to bring something. Hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast towards the Lord Jesus, towards all saints. Now, verse 6. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledge, acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ. You know, this verse is so deep. If you want to operate in the supernatural, you've got to acknowledge what is already in you. That's how you release it. You acknowledge it, you believe it, then you release it. Many a times what we do, we cry out to the Lord. I want more power. I want this. I want the move. No. Acknowledge. Appreciate. Understand it. Perceive it. Then believe it. Then release it. That's the key. Same with healing. God is not in the mission to go around and heal. He has already healed people 2,000 years ago. The key is to accept it. I'm not diverting from my message. I'm trying to drive home this, this principle. The things that is already in you, you can quench it. You can subdue it. Same the Holy Spirit is in you. As soon as you receive Christ, he's in you. It's called the indwelt. Hallelujah. You can easily quench him because you don't understand what is in you. Actually, an average Christian doesn't even quench the Holy Spirit. They grieve him because we, we, we use quench and grieving um, interchangeable. Quenching is when you quench the fire. Quenching, people who quench the, spirit, the Holy Spirit are people who already move in the power of the Holy Spirit, but they lack the understanding, they do what they want. The fire is already there. Then you, you, you can only quench the fire. But someone who lives in sin, you grieve him. He's not quenched, he's grieved. Hallelujah. So the things that is embedded in your spirit, you can easily subdue it and live like a slave. While God, when he sees you, he sees Christ. Because this story that is in you is Christ. Hallelujah. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 3. Uncle Uncle Ashianganje, what is this case? What is this kind of glory? We know exactly this glory. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person? That is Christ. And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself patched our sin, set at the right hand of the, his majesty on high. Hallelujah. We were called into a sonship. 
That's why we're given the spirit of sonship. This story we're talking about, it's Christ himself. He is the express image of God. Now, as a man, as much as Christ was the son of God, but Christ, as the son of man, he needed to grow. When you read Luke chapter 2, verse 52, Jesus advanced in wisdom and stature and in favor. He was the son of God, but as a son of man, he needed to grow in stature. The more you grow, the more you mature. For 30 years, God never used him. He had to go through the process that Pastor End was talking about. He needed to grow in stature. Imagine God growing in stature. After God was happy with him, he went through the refinery process. He then approved him. And now you are ready to go and glorify me. Some of the process the men of God are talking about are there to help us so that you can allow the glory of God to come out. Hallelujah. He grow in stature. This God we're talking about, we need to mature into the things of Lord, of Lord. Understand these things. Only then we'll move and walk in them. Hallelujah. Now, what I like about the word of God, when you read chapter Ephesians chapter 4, Alicia at how do we go about this? Ungulungulu then, he commanded the fivefold ministry. He gave them a KPA to say, You will be judged based on this. We're not called just to, to increase members. When Jesus realized there, were two, there, were, there was a crowd following him, but they were not after him. They were after the privileges. He stopped them. I know we measure ourselves with members. How many seats? Jesus told them, if you are not ready, let us go back home. In the spirit, he didn't want to waste. He wanted to focus. He said, I would rather have 12 people and impart myself to you than to have a crowd that is not looking after the things of God, but they are, they've witnessed the, the multiplication of bread. You would think they want God. They are looking for bread. He said, I don't have time for you. If Jesus, you think when now we have love, when you try to, to draw the crowd, if Jesus himself who doesn't have love? Who is love? He told them to go back. Who are you? We're not called to raise members. We are called to raise sons. Because the glory is in the sons. And the sons manifest their father. Uh, because sons glorify their father. That's why we don't sugarcoat things when we're here. You like us, you don't like us. The problem, if you're a teacher, you will be judged harshly. I don't know about other offices, but I know the office of teaching, those will be judged harshly. Hallelujah. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for, for ministry, for edifying of the body of Christ, till you come to the unit of faith, and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to a measure of the stage of the fullness of Christ. When you allow that what is in you to grow, you become like Christ. You become like Jesus who came on earth to manifest his Father. Jesus never had any agenda. His food was the will of the Father. 
Even those who didn't know the, the Father. But through Jesus. So when the world wants to know the Father, they don't need to go to heaven. When they meet you, Hallelujah. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians. Get to the, the verse of the week. Chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Where the, the Lord is, there is liberty. But all with unveiled face, beholding as a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Just as the Spirit of the Lord. The difference between our glory and the, the glory that was upon Moses. Moses only received that glory because he was with God for 40 years. That glory came from outside. Yes, Ega Jesu. Jesus was the glory. That's why Moses was fading. The glory we have, Tina, is from inside out. Ega Moses, he spent time with, with God. And then was Sulelwangayo. That's the difference. That's why it faded away. And it doesn't fade. Instead, I move from one glory to another glory. Because it's from inside us. But we need to tap into it. We need to learn how to walk in it. Moses once revealed something. I don't want to touch that. After that, he said, There's something beyond this present. This glory. I want to see your glory. The glory. I want to see your glory. There is present. And the story. It's beyond the present. It's story. And when the church begin to operate in glory, there's no need even to lay hands. God Himself come down and begin to do things. When we operate in glory. Breakthrough begins to happen because the atmosphere of heaven has come down. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. When you operate in glory, it's beyond the gifting. It's beyond the anointing. You can operate in anointing and still live in sin. Things happen. But in glory, you need to be holy because God himself, there's a difference between the two. We've been, we, we were called to move from one glory to the next. That's why my brother asked the other day, it's because the glory of God, you've allowed it to come out of you. You are now the atmosphere of heaven. Where you come, things change. Even if it turns the circle, heals people. It's because you move in glory. Hallelujah. I'm here to challenge us not to be comfortable where we are because the Father needs to be glorified. And the Father will only be glorified when we allow that which he has put in ourselves to unleash. And the Father will be glorified. Hallelujah. Oh. This glory is in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. This glory is in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You struggle with something. Even Moses did not have Christ in him. The powerful prophet Elijah did not have Christ in him. The people, as Kulmanga, the Old Testament, even Isaiah, she just pointed out Kulmanga Jesus. Why a fee so in Ilang? It never happened. That is why, as a man, Simon, what Nagambamba, 
But now you can take me, Lord. I've seen the glory. Amen. And that glory is not in heaven. It is in you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We need to mature. Allow God to manifest. Thank you, Jesus. Our second aspect of this glory, we manifest this glory by doing his works. After you've acknowledged, you've allowed flesh to come down. You've, you know the glory, you've allowed the glory to come out. I was just talking about you. But now my father must be glorified. The problem is, most Christians, they live for themselves. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Jesus is our savior. He is also our big brother. If you want to understand the glory, you need to understand him. You need to study him. If you want to know what is in you, study him. Hallelujah. You cannot glorify God when you live for yourself. When he came here on earth, he never had time for anything. And Jesus never, Agazang, as the Uzo changer is into. Instead, he brought something new. Uti, I'm bringing a new kingdom. The reason why he re they rejected him, they were waiting for someone who will change their situation. They were looking for a hero who will deal with the Romans. Jesus, I've got nothing to do with earthly things. What I have is from above. I'm bringing something new. And that's something new. You need to enter into it through justification. Hallelujah. John 17, from verse 1. It's over as soon. We glorify him through the works. Jesus spoke this way, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son. God will never demand something other than Zelangayon. When God wants something, it's because of Negezeon already. Glorify your son so that your son may also glorify you. That which is born of flesh is flesh. You will never give God anything that you've manufactured yourself. All God wants is what I forget. He, he is very fair. That's why he will judge you. He will judge you. He demands what Hallelujah. As we have given me, as we have given him authority over all flesh. That he should give eternal life to as many. Hallelujah. He never kept what he has. He gave it. And this eternal life that they may know you. Oh my God. Glorify me so that I can glorify you. So that they may know you. If abantu manga mazungulungulu, where are the sons? When we busy raising members, we should be raising disciples. People who are, disip who are very disciplined. Who are following. Who are here to raise sons. Unfortunately, in the spirit, there's no gender. There are no daughters. We are all sons. When the, when the Bible talks about son and daughters, sometimes ungulungulus are kuluma into good language that you understand. But in the spirit, there's no gender. We are all sons. Hence, we have this, this spirit of sonship. We are all sons. When we raise sons, only sons can glorify their father. Hallelujah. 
And this internal life that they may know you, you the only true God. And Jesus Christ whom you send, I have glorified you on earth. Oh my God. This is the son speaking now. I have glorified you on earth. Can you stand and say to your father, Daddy, I've glorified you on earth. Now they know you. Now they know the true God because of me. I have finished the work which you have given to me. When you do the work and when you finish it, the Father gets glory. Even here on earth, doing well, studying, masters, PhD. You know, such a Baba no Base Bapuza, Bakuma Bantana Baba, Baba proud Nabo. Because the sons have glorified the Father by his doing well. Hallelujah. When we finish and when we do the task, he receives his glory. Listen to verse 6. I have manifested your name to men whom you have given me out of the world. I have manifested you. They didn't, they didn't know about you. They were trying ways because conscious a man knew what it is a higher power, but they didn't know what it is power, higher power. I came to manifest the true God. Now they know you. I have manifested you. Now receive your glory. Now receive the glory, Father. I have manifested you. That's my prayer. When I get to him, I would say, Father, I have manifested you. They didn't know this aspect of you. They didn't know that you are I am that I am. But through me, they know. They didn't know that you are Jehovah Jireh. But through me, they know. Even Moses, when he faced Pharaoh, he started with the first miracles. Who Pharaoh ends? Second, third. What should Pharaoh? What does the hands of the Lord here? Because he was manifesting the Father. When we do the work, we are manifesting the Father. When we do miracles, it's not because we are showing off. We are manifesting the love of the Father. The enemy itself knew there's a hand of the Lord here. This is different. I've seen it before. Even the witchcraft can perform miracles. But this kind... There's a hand of the Lord here. A man was consecrated for God. What shall rather suffer affliction than to enjoy? Was she at the real place? Those are the people who manifest their God. What are you willing to live? I know some of us are expecting the glory. We think God will just come and pour it. It is there already. It is there already. It is there already. It's inside you already. You need to unleash it. You need to acknowledge it. You need to study it. Perceive it. Understand it. And unleash it. Understanding key in this kingdom. Paul Watanda's, I pray that you may have understanding. Understanding. Yes. Understanding. Hallelujah. Yes. That's how we operate in the supernatural. We don't just wish, we unleash. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. John 14, I'm about to close. Thank you, Jesus. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. Show us 
worship the Father. Now they want to know the Father. It is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long? Yet you have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Son manifest their Father. Jesus was saying, there's no need to see the Father. I am here to manifest the Father. If you've been with me, you know the Father. If the Father is not known, the sons are playing. It is the duty of the sons to manifest the Father. Hallelujah. If God is misconstrued, misunderstood, misinterpreted in the territory, don't question God. Are there sons? Or church members? Are there sons? Sons, Sons, when things are me, God. When the sun can't figure temple in, I told like Moshe A son who the people's pleaser, he took a whip and dealt with them, because uti in lugaba abale. They have a jealous. They want to protect in lugaba boazo. But people are basically on to any by a big about how so born mo engwele. Son, take charge of the situations. He said, this devil is crack havoc and earth. Let me come and deal with him. Angels are not sons. They did not qualify. Only the son, he came on earth. He dealt with the devil once and for all. He then took the victory. And he please maintain it. It's yours. We are not trying here to fight the devil. We are just maintaining that the son, our big brother, is done. understanding who you are. That was a topic on Monday. You can't unleash what you don't know. You'll be looking for power, crying for power, for, for impartation. Exhaust what is in you before God increase your grace. Why should God increase your grace if you have not tapped what is in you? When Gideon tried, God says, no, my friend. Go with that power is in you. That which is in you is enough. I ordained you before the foundation of the earth. I capacitate you then. This more anointing, more power, sometimes needs to be questioned for what? More faith. The Bible says, as little as a seed can move mountain." We are doing nothing because you want more faith for what? That measure that you've been given is enough to move mountain. We need to be revived. The intention of revival is to be reminded who we are and go back. Not to say it was nice, a church, there was fire. But have you been reminded who you are? So that when you come out of this place, a new person. So much power in you. So much in you. The Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Oh. Act chapter 10. Verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. When we heal people, that is why we are predicated upon love. Because we are manifesting the love of God. 
when we are doing good, we are manifesting the love of God towards humanity. Hallelujah. It's all about love and manifesting the Father. That is why the Father, book 1 Corinthians chapter 13, let you without love, even if you minister, whatever you do, it's nothing. Because you lack the understanding. When you prophesy, you're not prophesying because you've got the gift to do it. You are showing the love of God. Hence, you, you yourself must be predicated upon love. When we pray for people, we don't pray them just to showcase the power, but you are manifesting the love of God. Hallelujah. He went about doing good, manifesting his father. Freeing people from bondage because he loved them. The last verse, John 15, that's the last verse. John 15, verse 8. Fifteen, verse 8. Oh, my Jesus. But this, my Father, oh, but this, my Father, is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. When we bear much fruit, when we work, we glorify him. And not just work. We don't do common things. When we move in miracles and in power, we are demonstrating the love of God. When you reject power, reject miracles, we are denying the Father the glory. If See the song to him. See to him because we were just singing. Nala baba ngakola na bodi kada. They sing. How is the Father going to be glorified? For the longest time, the church rejected the miracles. They rejected the power. They baba offended when you talk about power. That is why the church in South Africa is not respected. Because the world, when they think of the church, why should I go there? Ministers, presidents should, instead they prefer witchcraft. They can see the power. But the church is rejecting it. When we operate in power, it's not about us. But only sons understand. We glorified him. Thank you, Jesus.